Well, every day on Outside Source, we bring you the biggest stories from around the world. We're going to turn to Armenia now because the fallout from its military defeat to Azerbaijan continues. These two are neighbours, and now the Armenian Prime Minister is accusing the military of an attempted coup hours after the military called on him to resign. And his supporters have been out on the streets. This is in Yerevan. You can see the Prime Minister walking with a loudspeaker, surrounded by supporters, and plenty more joined him. Have a look at this in Republic Square, when an estimated 20,000 people turned out, and the Prime Minister addressed them. As an elected Prime Minister, I am ordering all generals, officers and soldiers do your job of protecting the country's borders. This is my order and no one can breach it. Now, this has been a long time coming. The Prime Minister has been facing growing pressure to resign ever since he agreed a deal last year which ended the war over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh, but frankly it only ended by him effectively accepting defeat, and many people considered that a betrayal. Here's a statement from the military. Uh, the Prime Minister, it says, and the government are no longer able to make reasonable decisions. It accuses him of serious mistakes in foreign policy and says those mistakes have resulted in the Armenian state being on the verge of destruction. Well, within hours of that, the Prime Minister posted his reply on Facebook. I made decisions to dismiss the head of the general staff of the armed forces and the deputy head of general staff after it followed the announcement of high-ranking military officials demanding my resignation. The most important problem now is to keep the power in the hands of the people because I consider what is happening to be a military coup. Well, behind all of this is Nagorno-Karabakh. It's a region recognised as part of Azerbaijan, but it's been controlled by ethnic Armenians for years and became, in effect, part of Armenia. Now, these are some pictures from during the conflict last year. This was the aftermath of violence in a place called Bada. But after six weeks, a peace deal was eventually brokered by Russia, but only after Azerbaijan was allowed to keep areas that it had captured, and the reaction in Armenia was furious and immediate. As you can see, protesters stormed the parliament within hours of that deal being announced. Armenia's prime minister, though, argued he had no choice because he feared his forces would suffer even bigger losses. Well, since then, anti-government protests in Armenia have been gaining momentum. This was Yerevan on Wednesday. These are members of an opposition alliance who are forcing their way into Yerevan State University. We were told they were trying to gain support from students, and I guess that's one way of doing it. There were a few scuffles along the way. They also tried to enter another university, and also more than a dozen opposition parties have come together to call on the Prime Minister to go. Now, relevant to the conflict, relevant to the current tensions, are two significant players in the region. Russia, a military ally of Armenia, is calling for calm. Turkey, which backed Azerbaijan in the conflict, says this. Coup attempts can only destabilise the region, and that's why we're against it. In democracies, people can criticise the government and demand its resignation. This is natural. But the army calling on the government to resign when it came to power through elections, let alone to stage a coup, is unacceptable. Uh, I should add, off the back of that clip, there's no evidence of a coup taking place or a coup being attempted. Well, Armenia's prime minister has been in power since 2018, so he's familiar with political tensions. Since then, he survived several attempts in parliament to remove him. So it's quite hard to work out what might happen next. But here's the BBC's Rehan Dimitri assessing his future. It's still unclear what's going to happen, uh, what's going to happen with Nikol Pashinyan because he fired the army, uh, the, the head of the armed forces earlier today, uh, but the president of Armenia is yet to sign that order. So what appears to, uh, to be happening now in Armenia is that Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan is um, really on the other side of the spectrum from the army generals, from the president and the head of the country's church, all of them demanded for him to resign.